r slash no sleep posted by u slash aspen ward i work as a paranormal specialist these are some of my experiences part two so looking at the last part it seems like everyone is interested in a bit more background info i don't have all the answers myself yet but i'll tell you what i do know almost 11 years ago now my mom was pulled into an adjacent dimension called an elith as a result of my mistakes I've spent this time trying to find a way to find and rescue her. Unfortunately, I haven't succeeded. I still work as a paranormal specialist in the hopes that one day I'll encounter someone or something who has the answers I'm looking for. That said, I have learned quite a bit about the nature of the paranormal and my abilities related to it. Most of what we think of as paranormal entities come from alternate dimensions, usually those closely opposed to our dimension. These include a huge variety of entities ranging from the benign to the malevolent, and includes the entities from an elif which I just think of as demons even though they have little to do with any religious traditions. The exception to this rule is human spirits, which are just souls that haven't passed on yet. At first glance my problem seems pretty simple. I need to get into an elif, and obviously entities from there get here. So it should be possible to travel between the two. The roadblock I keep hitting is that normally to transit into another dimension, the entity needs to be summoned or invoked and considering how I've treated everyone I've met from an elith I doubt they're gonna help me out with that. Instead I'm looking for a way to open a door from our world to theirs without having to destabilize reality itself, more on that below. I also haven't exactly figured out how I'll deal with them on their home turf. Luckily, I'm not working on this problem alone. I'd like to tell you all about how I started working with Serene. We started working together when I was 18. By this time in my life I had managed to survive plenty of actual paranormal encounters, and had more or less figured out what I was doing. Then again, I was also at the age where I thought I knew everything. I was waiting in a train station on my way home from a job when I got the email. It was the middle of winter and I was all the way up in Boston, so it was freezing even inside the station, do they even heat those things? Anyway, I was sorting through my email inbox deleting spam when I found an email from a woman, SG. This one was a bit unusual, and described feeling that there was something not only in her apartment but also in her mind. Emails like this can go one of two ways, either the person is having a medical problem in which case I refer them to a doctor or psychiatrist, or it could be something paranormal. The email was pretty vague, describing the entity as something that could be felt and seen with her mind, but not with her eyes. The presence didn't seem to change based on the time of day, which was somewhat unusual. She felt that it was invading her mind and that nothing she did would make it leave. The key detail that led me to believe this could be paranormal, was that if she left the apartment the feeling would vanish. Of course that didn't prove anything, but it was interesting so I gave her a call. She answered on the second ring and whispered, Are you Nemo? Yes I am, and you must be SG. She just replied with a whispered, I'll call you back. Followed by the sound of scuffling shoes before the call went silent. So that was a little strange, but then again strange is pretty much expected in my line of work. As I waited for her return call, I watched the other people in the station. I'm pretty sure the guy on the bench across from mine took some rather interesting drugs, he was kinda swaying back and forth with a vacant expression. I was debating finding somewhere else to sit when my phone rang. SG had wanted to talk to me in private without the entity being aware of our conversation and so had left her apartment. I confirmed the information in the email and asked whether she heard any strange noises, if anything moved on its own, standard paranormal stuff. She said almost none of that happened, just a feeling of a presence in her mind. Like a lot of my clients, she had already tried contacting other experts for help, you know the kind, the ones who bring random electronic devices that look good on TV but don't really do anything. None of them noticed anything unusual in her apartment. Her neighbors were getting frustrated at the constant stream of people in and out at all hours of the night and SG was getting desperate. I agreed to come see what I could do. We discussed my previous experience and track record, I'm not sure how much of it she believed. I don't blame her, it's not like paranormal entities throwing people across rooms and portals to other dimensions are a normal part of daily life. By the time I ended the call, the drugged out guy was staring at me like I was the second coming of Christ and I decided to split. I got my train ticket changed to go to Boston Logan International, and grabbed the next plane to Florida. My place could wait, it was time to go down south. At least it would be warmer than Boston. After a total transit time of like 16 hours, I arrived half asleep in Tampa. I never could sleep on planes. By this time I'd mostly stopped getting in cars with random, possibly crazy, people who I barely knew and instead called a taxi to SG's apartment. The neighborhood looked pretty standard, 
Not the most expensive apartments but definitely not the worst. A young, nervous-looking woman was sitting outside the complex fidgeting with a phone. I tipped the taxi driver and gathered my bags. By the time I got out she was already walking over, and introduced herself as SG. We talked outside the apartment for a while, I told her how I would like to tour the apartment. She was hesitant to go back inside, claiming that any time she entered the apartment she felt increasingly confused and was worried that she would forget who she was if she went back inside. She said she kept forgetting things she should know like what city she was in or what basic appliances were for. Now this was a new one for me, if this was paranormal it was not something I had encountered before. Analic demons could impose spiritual force on a person to make them feel something, or possess a person's body. Light entities from Enix could speak in someone's mind telepathically, they kind of had to since they don't have a mouth, they're literally made of light. But I hadn't heard of anything that could alter someone's mental identity in such an insidious way. So of course, I went in by myself. After all that's what I'm hired to do right? SG made me promise to call if anything happened and gave me the keys, telling me to go upstairs to the third floor, apparently the elevator was sketchy. She kept glancing at me as I entered the complex. I didn't notice anything strange walking through the lobby or down the hallway to the stairs. The stairs also seemed completely normal, a bit dimly lit but I found the cause of that easily enough. Maintenance hadn't replaced the lights in a while and a few bulbs had burned out. Walking down the third floor hall to room 311 was also completely normal. Standard, maintenance hasn't been here very often, worn carpeting and slightly chipped paint. I was starting to think this may just be a case of apartment-centered anxiety, and was starting to think of ways to approach SG about it as I got to the door. I also figured I should check for things like gas leaks or carbon monoxide, which I did bring a detector for. I'd learned that I may as well bring some maintenance tools since about half my jobs ended with basic home repairs. I checked the crack of the door for gas and CO but found nothing. I opened the door and checked again, still nothing. Looking into the unit, it seemed pretty standard. I didn't feel any strange energy, I reached in and flicked on the lights, which worked. Even my trusty old thermometer reads 75 F so definitely not a cold spot. But. As soon as I crossed the threshold a wave of the most intense confusion and loss washed over me. I stumbled a few steps forward before tripping over a rug and falling. I hit my head on a small table beside the entryway and everything went black. And I had thought I was being so careful. I awoke to the sound of a shutting door. I was on a couch. I was in a field of light. I was lost and scared. I was filled with peace. I rolled over on the flat field and fell to the floor. Wait. What? I fell down a flat surface. I reached up and touched my head, I felt something wet. Right I hit my head, I was investigating an apartment. I was playing with my child mates in the light when I fell. Now I'm. Okay hold up child mates? Seriously? As I tried to figure out exactly what that was supposed to be, I realized I couldn't remember my own name. I couldn't remember my real name, or my fake one, but the important part was that I couldn't remember my real one. It felt like the bottom dropped out from the world. If I didn't have my real name then who or what did? That snapped me right out of my possibly concussed confusion. A stream of emotions ran through me, some seeming to come from me, and others coming from something else. I decided to deal with those later, since getting my name back was more important than figuring out how I felt about the situation. If I opened my eyes, I could still only see a field of light and sense a multitude of presences moving around me as if playing with each other. They seemed happy, in as much as I could tell since I couldn't see them. I closed my eyes and realized I could still only see the field in my mind's eye, I couldn't visualize the apartment I was in. Using my hands, I felt beneath me. Definitely carpet. I felt behind me. Definitely a couch. So physically I must still be in SG's apartment, and I must have fell off the couch when I tried to roll over and sit up in the field. I'm not sure how I got to the couch in the first place, but I guess I'll figure it out later. Now to figure out what I was looking at. It didn't feel particularly threatening. Nothing was running towards me, nothing felt particularly malevolent. Except for being unable to remember my name which was kinda a problem. I decided to try communicating with whatever was showing me this vision. Hello, does anything want to talk to me? I asked the apartment and maybe the field. I couldn't tell if I was looking at a memory or a place. In response I felt one of the entities in the field move towards me. I watched it approach, and I'll try to describe its appearance to you now. In my mind's eye it looked like a woman. She was beautiful and alien with long flowing silver hair. Her skin was almost translucent and appeared a faint purple, almost as if it shouldn't have been visible to the human eye, which I suppose is correct, since I could only see it with my mind and not with my physical eyes. 
She didn't appear to wish me harm, but as she got closer the scenery began to change. Slowly the other entities in the field became visible to me. They all appeared similar to the one I assumed was in the apartment, but seemed to be of varying ages. As I watched, I began to know things about the scenery and people in it. This knowledge seemed to appear in my mind of its own accord. Fantastical scenes of child mates playing in the field of grasslight and careers holding the newly formed young unfolded before my mind. There was joy and light, and for a time I forgot myself. I knew that this was home. Abruptly the emotional content of the scene shifted. The original stood by my side, and a feeling of loss too unfathomable for me to understand washed through as me. A darkness advanced from the horizon as the grass light went out. This had never before happened in the history of our people. We watched in confusion as the darkness came closer. An inquisitive child reached out to the wall of nothingness and... A soundless cry rang out, we felt it all as one. It was gone. The hand was gone. Confusion and panic as we tried to run in all directions but where could we go? The nothingness came from all sides as one by one, piece by piece, our mind was lost. We didn't understand but reality itself was fracturing, pulling apart at the seams as existence shattered to nothing. And then we were one. We were never supposed to be one. Reality warped as we fell into loss. Then there was light, but it was strange and dim. We looked around and saw an unfamiliar structure surrounding us. We were trapped. There was no sky and no grass light, what light there was emanated from strange fixtures above. We wanted to communicate with the shadow other that came and went from this place, but it was frightened and ran. We were alone for the first time since existence began, alone. We were never meant to be one, never just one, never. This knowledge slowly localized so that it was coming from a singular source. I found that I could remember myself as a separate being and, bonus points, I could remember who I was again. The entity in SG's apartment had communicated with me, by showing me the experience of its arrival in this world firsthand. I gave it some time to calm down before attempting to ask its name. The entire concept seemed to be completely foreign to it and just led to us talking, if you can call it talking without words, in circles. I was actually relieved by this. Since if it didn't know what names were, there was pretty much no way it could have learned mine and used it against me. Since this update is getting pretty long, and I've already gone through the exciting parts, I'll try to summarize the rest a bit more quickly. After significant communication issues, I managed to figure out that this entity came from an alternate reality I've decided to call Yotis. Its people existed as a sort of telepathic hive mind, with multiple physical manifestations but only a singular consciousness. All manifestations were female in appearance, although the concept of gender doesn't really apply to them as young are created from a coalescence of intent performed by a career manifestation. The light spectrum is brightest in UV, and light there comes from grass-like plants on the ground as opposed to the sky. As far as I could determine, the entire reality of Yotis was destroyed by an unknown calamity. During this, the divisions between universes became weak enough that this entity fell through into Earth's dimension. This led to the current situation. I wanted to talk some more with it, so I offered to let it come live with me instead of an SG's apartment. After some more confusion, we managed to convey and understand that idea, and the entity came to live with me. Lucky for me it learned to talk quietly, so to speak, so I don't end up confused and seeing something that isn't there every time we communicate. A few months later the entity had finally understood the concept of names, and decided it identified as Aishi and wanted to be called Serene. SG was quite happy to have her apartment back to herself and was very worried about the bump on my head. She had me go get it looked at by an actual doctor and everything. I just realized that the client's initials may have been a bit confusing this whole time. SG is not Serene, even though they do share an initial. Sorry if I confused anyone. Nowadays Serene and I get along great. She's actually very nice, I think she just frightens people since humans aren't exactly used to communicating in pure feelings and pictures. It turns out having help from a mind reading entity is pretty useful when you're looking for information. A few years after I met her, she helped me find out which demon in an elith is in possession of my mother's soul. I know you're probably thinking, Nemo, that's some pretty important information, why wouldn't you tell us that before? Well, it's important but not super helpful. If I told you Tom had your bicycle where exactly would you go look? But don't worry, I'll tell you guys that story along with any new info I uncover in the next update. In the meantime, any information you guys have is always useful.